The Book of the Damned, by Charles Hoyfort, Chapter 21e. Vast wheel-like constructions. They are especially adapted to roll through gelatinous medium from planet to planet. Sometimes, because of miscalculations, or because of stresses of various kinds, they enter this Earth's atmosphere. They are likely to explode. They have to submerge in the sea. They stay in the sea a while, revolving with relative shoreliness until relieved, and then emerge, sometimes close to vessels. Seamen tell of what they see. Their reports are interred in scientific morgues. I should say that the general route of these constructions is along latitudes not far from the latitudes of the Persian Gulf. Journal of the Royal Meteorological Society, Volume 28, page 29. That, upon April 4, 1901, about 8.30, in the Persian Gulf, Captain Hoseason of the steamship Kilwa, according to a paper read before the Society by Captain Hoseason, was sailing in a sea in which there was no phosphorescence, there being no phosphorescence in the water. I suppose I'll have to repeat that, there being no phosphorescence in the water, vast shafts of light, though the captain uses the word ripples, suddenly appeared, shaft followed shaft upon the surface of the sea, but it was only a faint light, and in about 15 minutes, died out, having appeared suddenly, having died out gradually, the shafts revolved at a velocity of about 60 miles an hour, phosphorescent jellyfish correlate with the old dominant, in one of the most heroic compositions of disregards in our experience, it was agreed, in the discussion of Captain Hoseason's paper, that the phenomenon was probably pulsations of long strings of jellyfish. Nature, Volume 21, page 410. Reprint of a letter from Ari Harris, commander of the AHN, Company's steamship Shodjan, to the Calcutta Englishman, January 21st, 1880 that upon the 5th of June, 1880, off the coast of Malabar, at 10 p.m., water calm, sky cloudless, he had seen something that was so foreign to anything that he had ever seen before, that he stopped his ship. He saw what he describes as waves of brilliant light, with spaces between. Upon the water were floating patches of a substance that was not identified. Thinking in terms of the conventional explanation of all phosphorescence at sea, the captain at first suspected this substance. However, he gives his opinion that it did no illuminating but was, with the rest of the sea, illuminated by tremendous shafts of light. Whether it was a thick and oily discharge from the engine of a submerged construction or not, I think that I shall have to accept this substance as a concomitant, because of another note. As wave succeeded wave, one of the most grand and brilliant, yet solemn, spectacles that one could think of, was here witnessed.